A certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Hold on right now. I want you to recognize this. Blind. Say blind man. Blind. Say blind. blind. That means he couldn't see. See, a lot of times, see, you got to stop. What you got to understand is blind man. He was blind. See, a lot of times, by you see, it ain't good for you. What you see, you see, you see, bring doubt to you. When you look at your finances, when you look at your, your, your blood pressure medicine, when you look at your, your life, and when you look at your service, it ain't good for you. And, uh, there's different types of blind. See, blind is not knowing the direction you're going. Blind is not being able to see what's in front of you. Ain't God good. See, right now, every promise God got for you, you can't see that happening in your life physically. But you should be able to see it spiritually. And, and a lot of times you're looking naturally and you see your life and you think it's impossible what God can do. Why? Because you can see. But he was a man that couldn't see. He was a blind man. See, see, sometimes you need to have, you've got to be blind to your circumstances and your situation and still be able to hear the word of God. But a lot of times you're seeing stuff and it's messing you up from going forward because what you see. See, God is moving in this house, but if you really go and really see God moving in this house, you can't see him so you don't respond to him. But God is in this house and God is in this room and God is ready to change your life forever. But because what you see in your life and see your circumstance when you hear, you think it takes a miracle when it all it takes is God paying you. But your sin is too much. He was a blind man. Couldn't see. Couldn't see nothing. See, I, I need you to be not be able to see nothing but hearing what God do. Stop seeing and trying to put your bills down to see what your bills do. Stop trying to look at your life and look at your past and just listen. Stop looking at your circumstances and your situation and just listen and receive what God got for you. He was blind. If a blind man can receive a sight, why you can't receive your sight, your blessing? Because you see him. And what you see deceives you. But the blind man, the blind man, read the rest of and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. Oh, really? He heard a multitude. In other words, Jesus was on the scene. You know, Jesus is always present when there's something going on. He's not far, far off from you right now when you're dealing with something in your life. He's close. He's always present. Notice in the Bible, whenever somebody was in need, Jesus was always present. Amen. Whenever somebody needed something, Jesus was always present. Amen. He wasn't so far off where you can't reach him. He's always in a place where you can reach him. And when the, why? Because when the people were around the Lord and around Jesus Christ, they were they, they making so much noise, they was praising God. See, one thing about the house of God, it should be a house of joy and a house of praise and a house of worship. Because we know right now God is in the house and He's blessing us and He's moving in our lives. And He does not, if He don't do nothing else, He can give us from our sins. He died on Calvary. He rose on the third day. He sits on right here. By the stripes, we've been healed. And we don't praise him for nothing else. We ought to be excited about what God is getting ready to do in our lives because of what he's already done. Yeah. He holds no good thing from us. He said, no good thing I will hold for them that love me. Yeah. See, a love is shown. If I really love the Lord, I'm going to praise him and give him. See, because all I got to offer him is my praise. Yeah. All I got to offer is my worship. I can't buy my way. I can't do anything. All I can do is thank him and believe him and glorify him. And God said miracles will begin to happen in my life. Shine the wonder will follow me. Why? Because I believe that God is in this house and I'm honoring God. I'm not honoring man, but I'm honoring God. I'm praising God, lifting God up. I'm aiming his word. I'm glorifying God. I'm excited. So, in other words, the blind the people was excited. Because Jesus was able to heal, deliver, and set free. 
It wasn't the quiet person in the house that needed something from God. So in other words, the blind man that couldn't say, say, what's all this ruckus? And I go so far, he never heard such a praise and such a work of such a of his Noah before that it drew his attention to he had to ask the question, what is going on? It's something the visible that come in and can't get a praise and a worship from God and say, what is going on? Say, God is moving. God is present. God is in the house. God is present. It's something when God can come in the house and don't feel welcome because nobody thinks you're going to praise him. Uh, notice when every house he went in was crowded.
But you want to preach to me about how real God is. But when you act in the presence of God, you don't praise him. Help me somebody. Help me somebody. You in church like you did. Thank you. 
all this for me. He's my healer. He can heal me. He can give me my sight back. I'm telling you, he can heal you today. He can give your sight back. He's in the house. He's in the house. You got to call his name. You got to believe his name. He protects you. As soon as about all these things you have heard about Jesus. And when you hear the preaching, you don't get excited. Did you know that you're going to come out your situation? That I was telling you earlier about waxing your ears. You'd have been in so many church service and ain't getting nothing. You'd have been in so many church and ain't even in the store you'll see. So when you hear the word of God, you're not moved emotionally. See, because it don't take the spirit to make you move.
and he called him. I've been trying to shut him up. I've been trying to make him cry.
They didn't just bring him to Jesus. They brought him to Jesus. They didn't just bring him to Jesus just to shout and to praise and to lift him up. They brought him for a reason because he was sitting back. He was out. He didn't want to draw Jesus' attention because he was making the known. He didn't tell Jesus what was wrong with him. Jesus was off this, but Jesus wasn't it. But he didn't tell him. Don't come Lord here. He didn't say that. He said, Jesus. Of Nazareth. He didn't have to tell Jesus what was wrong with him because he wasn't there in that place yet. Sometimes you tell God what's wrong with you before it's time. He just wanted to get into the room in the presence of God. See, sometimes you ain't in the presence of God, but you want to tell him what's wrong with you before you can get in the presence of God. Because you ain't praise God. You ain't worship God. Glory, 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 glory. And if you look at the Old Testament, before they came into the presence of God, they worshiped God and praised God. And in the prayer, they worshiped and praised God for who he was before they told God their situation. And you ain't worship and praise God in the whole service, but yet you don't pray. Until he called on Jesus Christ, they kept calling Jesus Christ, they kept cheating through that, and he draw them to him, he didn't get his healing. See, you don't know the only thing you lack in is the praise and worship God and telling who he is. Not who you is or what you're going through, but who he is. He's your deliverer. He's your way maker. He's your people. He died and he rose for you. He died and he shed his blood for you. God strikes you and heals. God, and you pray that if you love him. God, and then yet he draw me to The Bible said draw closer to God and resist the devil. So I ain't even got to praise you. I want to get a word and I ain't had a praise. I'm not following the order of the Bible. I want to get a word but I ain't praise and worship God. This blind man we didn't hear who he was begin to call his name. I mean, it was power in his name. Yeah. It's power in his name. Yeah. And yet, as he praised him and called his name, he had to be drawn to him. Yeah. He said, bring him to him. Yeah. Oh, girl, you got to have a praise and a worship before you can come to him. You got to know who you are. Him that come to me got to first know who I am. Yeah. If you don't know who I am, how you going to be drawn to me? And we come to church and don't even get got into a praise mode or worship mode, and then we want to get a word. And then we won't pray. And we need to praise him. And lift him up. And we wonder why we struggle with getting delivered and getting healed. Because God is a God of order. I can't come just sit down here in church and just wait for the prayer line. I got to praise and worship God and glorify God and let him know that so he can see me so he can call me. Because God ain't calling nobody that ain't praise and worship God. You ain't getting called up no more, is you? You got to come up on your own now because ain't nobody calling you. Because ain't no praise and worship believing going on, no faith activated in him. Because when you praise and worship, come your faith action. And when there ain't no praise and worship, there ain't no action, there ain't no faith at work. That's why the enemy want to silence you because you know if you silence it, all of a sudden you get prayer and you think the prayer is stronger, but you weren't brought into that atmosphere. See, it's an atmosphere you got to be brought into. And when you draw into the atmosphere, you get healed. You get the look. But you don't got so caught up in the people and into the situation and looking at this one and looking at that. So you don't know what you need to do to be drawn into the place where you need to get what you need to get. We read the rest of that sister say real quick. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto thee? Listen to him. 
when he got and took the pressure of God. Look at God. Look, look, at, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Now, now look at it. Now he could have asked for anything he wanted. He got in there. Jesus said, What must what you want me to do for you? How can I believe that Jesus already knew he was blind? I believe Jesus already knew he was blind, but Jesus asked him, said, What would you have me do for you? Right there, you got an opportunity to get anything you want. When God, when you, you've been drawn to God. What he asked for, but he couldn't ask for different things. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. But the most thing he wanted was a sight back. Yes, yeah. But he had to stop at his second. He could have said, I want my sight back. I want to be wealthy. I want to be healthy. <laughs> because whatever he would have asked at that moment, he would have given you. Get into the presence of God. You need to stop living in God. When you know you're in the presence of God and you hear the voice say, What must I do for you? It's very subtle. And me being a man of God, I ask somebody that question. What would you have to do? Because you got to be drawn into the presence. That ain't something you can just ask somebody. To do it. But when they got a praise and a worship, and God was drawn into it, doing, you know these situations, but you're not limited to just that situation. And you should have a praise and a worship to when God draw you to it, because you're going to be healed and still be broke. You're going to be healed and still hard broke. You can have it all, but still ain't got what you really need. That's why you got to know the importance when you get into the presence of God. You got to know that it's a privilege and an honor to be called by God into His presence. And Jesus asked him, What would you have me do? Because you're going to hit it again. And so when you hit it, when you get a praise and when you get a worship, and I'm telling you right now, don't limit God to the what you're dealing with. Your priority with telling all about it. It's too many times we go in the presence of God and don't give Him all, and we have to keep going back. And keep going back because we keep doing it one at a time. But he got the ability to do it all at once. Glory to God. In other words, everybody don't go 